here today to talk about vitamin D. You've probably been hearing a lot of things in the media, in the news about vitamin D, some good, some bad. Um, we're going to discuss what it is that vitamin D does for us, some things that it will help us with. Cover some of the basics here. Some of the co more common questions that people have is how much vitamin D should I have? How to know if you're deficient in vitamin D? Um, what are the reasons that we need the vitamin D? Uh, proper amounts? How to get more? How safe is it? Right. We can touch on some other questions as we go through. Uh, people that are deficient, they're starting to find that most people that live above 35 degrees uh, latitude, which is about the line of Atlanta, Georgia, anyone who lives north of there, most likely, especially during the winter time, you're going to be deficient. Because the way we make get vitamin D mostly is from the sun. So 15 minutes in the sun will give you about 20,000 international units of vitamin D, um, which is you know, perfectly safe. That's what your body will naturally produce. We recommend that people take, or it's, it's recommended for any adult, especially living north of Atlanta, Georgia, take about 2,000 internationally today with no, no problem. Children, uh, 30, we recommend about 35 IUs per pound. For example, a 20 pound kid, about 700 units a day. And people with chronic disease or you know, any other kind of problems, we may recommend way, way more than that, up to four to five times that. Um, best ways to get more. We, Get vitamin D from the sun. Um, vitamin D is produced in the skin. Uh, the, the sunlight actually hits our, our cells and actually hits cholesterol within our skin and transforms the cholesterol into vitamin D. Uh, so like I said before, about 15 to 20 minutes in the sun will make 20,000 units of vitamin D for our body. Another great way to get it, if, you, if you're not getting the sun, if you live up here, you're not getting the sun, is natural light tanning bed. Uh, that will increase your levels of uh, uh, using UVB rays, which are the rays that are actually the ones that make the vitamin D within your body. And they'll tend to minimize the UVA rays, which are the ones that will give you the tan and cause the skin cancer and all the bad effects that some of has. Another way to get them is supplements, supplementation, taking it over. Uh, there's two major ones that we see on the market today, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. We recommend you take vitamin D3 because that's the body's natural form of vitamin D, the one that's bioactively available and the one that the body will, will naturally use. Vitamin D is actually made from a, a plant a plant sterile that our body has to then convert into vitamin D3 and then use. Uh, they've seen that with vitamin D2, taking high doses of it, especially if we're recommending 2,000 units a day, uh, vitamin D2 will become toxic uh, very, very quickly way that we don't get it, very little vitamin D in food, because we're meant to get it from the sun. And so if you're getting it from the sun, there's no point to have it in, in any of the food. So there's very little vitamin D found in food. Some of the food that you, we will find it in, uh, there's a little bit in fortified milk, uh, and you can get between five and a thousand units in a nice sized piece of wild caught salmon. But how often do you guys eat salmon? Once a day, twice a day, twice a week? That's great, but it's still you need to be twice a day to get your daily recommended dose of vitamin D. So, um, a little chart here to see you know, how much uh, I usually recommend to take, how much is generally safe to take um, without having you know, uh, a blood test or anything. Um, 2,500 units to 1,000. We re usually recommend anywhere between two and 5,000 units for, for people, uh, pregnant women, 5,000 units because you're kind of eating for two there. We make, mostly make it in our skin. People with darker skin uh, will need more sunlight to expose to develop the, the same amount uh, of vitamin D that, that you'll need. So they may need, depending on the darkness of their skin, they may need five to 10 more uh, times in the, in the sun, depending on how much dark. Longer than any of us here would, but uh, 
change what we really need would be more vitamin D in our diet. As we age, uh, our skin produces less, or 75% less vitamin D as we get older. So if you're older, you need to stay in the sun longer as well. So we have to either try to get out there and supplement, or try to get out there to get that time in the sun, or supplement. The only no way to really know what your what your levels are is get your blood tested. Uh, anything less than 50 anymore is considered 50 nanograms per milliliter, which is when you get your blood tested. That's the that's the readout that they give you. Will give you um, so anything less than 50 nanograms per milliliter is considered deficient. Most of the people we test are less than 20 around here. Uh, if you have between 20 and 30, and, and you're living in this area, you're doing good but you're still way deficient. You still could be doing way better. Uh, your optimal level is between 50 and 65, 50 to 70. That's what we'd like to see you on your blood test. Uh, and then some, you know, there's been some evidence that treat, they can treat, they're starting to treat cancer with really, really high dose levels. And then we see toxicity of vitamin D upwards of 100 nanograms per milliliter. And usually it, it's more than that. They probably won't see a change until you're up over 150 nanograms per milliliter. And that's when you start maybe seeing some toxicity levels. So most of us in this room are probably sitting at between 20 and 30 nanograms per milliliter. It would take a lot, a lot of vitamin D to get us over 100, 150 nanograms per milliliter. Um, how to know if you had enough? Again, get tested. The uh, blood test you want to have is a 25 hydroxy D, 25 OH D3. Uh, any lab around here will do them. Geneva Hospital does them. You might need a physician order. I'll just order that up for you. Uh, they do have some home kits available. You can order them online. You know, do some blood spots on the on the thing and send it in. It costs about 70 bucks. Uh, the other thing you can do, and it's kind of a, a generalized check, is you can palpate the midline of your sternum. And if it's tender, it's a sign that you may be vitamin D deficient. So if you, you just have like a medium medium pressure on the middle of your sternum and it kind of hurts and it's sore, that may be a sign that you're vitamin D deficient. Like we said before, vitamin D toxicity is rare, very, very difficult to do. Uh, the one nice thing, and that's why we, the way we recommend mostly to get your, your vitamin D, it's through either safe tanning beds or through the sun, because you cannot over D or OD on vitamin D by using the sun. Uh, your body will naturally, when you have enough, Turn the system off. Self-regulates itself. Well, again, toxicity occurred well over 100 nanograms per milliliter. And if you're still worried about it, the true way to test to know if you're if you're if you're becoming toxic is when you have your blood levels checked, have them test for calcium as well. Uh, when you're when the levels of vitamin D in your system are becoming toxic, your levels of calcium will spike. Because calcium or uh, vitamin D very much in charge of, of regulation of calcium through the body, the regulation of calcium in the blood. So if you're getting way too much vitamin D, your calcium will be very high. Uh, some of the functions of vitamin D in your body as we go forward here, uh, again, regulates calcium in the body. Uh, you need vitamin D in your body for your body to uptake calcium uh, in the system. That's why when, when women are, are, especially women, told to take vitamin D supplements or calcium supplements, they're told to take vitamin D with it. You need vitamin D in your body, your body to start to absorb calcium. Which is, calcium is very important for, for many things, mostly bone health and some other things as well. Vitamin D is actually not a vitamin, but it's a pro-hormone. It's actually a precursor to many hormones and it, and it, and it acts in the body like a hormone. Hormones uh, function in the body, they're uh, peptides in the body, will actually cause things to happen. Different cells have different binding sites for different hormones, and when things bind to cells, it, it makes things happen, it turns them on. Like, uh, for instance, growth hormone. When a cell binds growth hormone, it causes the cell to grow, it causes it to reproduce, it causes things to get, you know, causes your body to get you know, bigger, stronger, or whatever you need, it will cause growth. And there's dozens and dozens of, of different hormones in the body, vitamin D, acts like one of them and assists many of the hormones in their function um, for that reason. 